All right, so hello everyone. We are making this video today because we want to help those who will be taking up the principal's test exam soon this year. So our our discussion today will focus on domain one, leading strategically, particularly in uh, strand 1.2, school planning and implementation. So we're going to talk about how do we craft the school improvement plan and its rational and its overview, right? So today we're going to uh, cover the following we're going to identify three key result area of basic education and link it to the SIP process and we'll try to determine the activities in preparing for the SIP development and we are hoping that you'll be familiarized of the different to tools in gathering information on the situation of the children and uh, the learners in terms of their access to quality basic education and the situation of the schools uh, in terms of governance so hopefully you will be able to manifest appreciation of the SIP utility in improving our schools. So the question is, what is SIP? So SIP is actually the abbreviation of the school improvement plan. So it is what school leaders and the teachers use in order to, to strategically uh, implement change in the respective schools. Um, as per definition, it is a roadmap that lays down specific interventions that a school with the help of the community and other stakeholder undertakes within a period of three consecutive school years. So basically, it covers a plan that will be implemented for the next three years. So that's the SIP, right? It has been here for quite a while, but lately it has been called as the Enhanced School Improvement Plan. So what, what was enhanced, we'll find out in this lecture, right? So the SIP, it involves three key result areas to improve. So as a school, when you are a leader, you try to look at this different aspects. So how would you improve your access, right? So access refers to how you're going to make education available to all because the constitution tells us that education should not be something that should be given to a few people. It should be given to as 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 many people as you can and to all Filipinos because that is their basic right to have it uh, regardless of their of their ethnicity of their gender or whatever it is that differs us from each other quality in the other hand refers to uh, the quality of education that you deliver as much as possible we want our education to be of high quality so that it will be something that can help them in their lives Governance in terms of how we manage the school, how we make sure that the administrative procedures are well, uh, you know, well in place. And at the same time, uh, it also talks about how we manage and uh, make uh, specific changes in our school, right? So what are the features of the school improvement plan? Well, first of all, it should be evidence-based. You cannot implement something out from the blue or without any basis at all, right? So it should be evidence-based. So what does that mean? It means that it should be something that is based on data, based on facts. It's not something that you actually uh, taken out from the blue or something that you just think of. It should be something that that is based from the investigation or the facts that you have gathered. Results-based means it should be measurable in a sense that you should be able to see if your projects are really accomplishing something you see whatever initiatives we have should be based on results so it should have a real concrete impact to this, the activities and how the school processes is being changed because of your initiative in the school improvement plan and it should be child or learner centered it should be it should revolve around the fact that we wanted to improve education for the sake of our learners not for the teachers not for the stakeholders but we want it to be something that is learner based that's why we need to listen to their voice that's really part of the sip process right so here uh, we see that sip is an important element of sbm we all know that we wanted to do some shared governance 
And what does this mean? It means that we want to involve the community and the stakeholders in terms of improving the quality of education that we deliver in our respective schools. So that is the main thrust of the SBM or the school-based management, right? So we want our stakeholders to be involved. We want our teachers, the internal and external stakeholders to be involved, especially the community and the private stakeholders because as we all know, they are one of those who can greatly contribute to the progress of the school. So the SIP is an important element of SBM. Further, it devolves the governance of education to schools. And it empowers school teams and personnel, expands community participation and involvement, and makes delivery of education services more responsive, efficient, and effective. Now take note that SBM and SIP could be different uh, in terms of how we... Um, you know, how we implement them in our respective schools. And that's one of the major problems. We tend to disconnect uh, each of the initiatives. But we all know that SBM, uh, and the SAP is actually an important element of SBM. SBM is one of our major goals as a department. In fact, it's one of our, um, you know, one of the developmental thrusts that we have, that we want to involve our stakeholders. We want uh, empowerment a local empowerment in our respective schools and shared governance in our respective schools. So once we do the SIP, we need to take this into account. That's the reason why we will see later on that there's a really a deep need for us to involve our stakeholders in the process of doing our planning for the SIP. Right, so SIP guiding principles. The SIP shall be anchored on the depth and vision and mission, core values, strategies, and on central regional division and school goals so at first you should actually base it on the vision mission core values whatever you do there there should be a revisiting of all this core values all this vision and mission the sip shall be evidence and results based that's why there should be a preliminary data gathering done right and and of course, we have here the SIP guiding principles. The development of SIP requires innovative and systems thinking and a mindset of continuous improvement. Actually, this is a, an entirely very important topic that we need to really learn as school leaders. We need to understand what is systems thinking and what does being innovative mean? Well, basically, all these things is a paradigm, a, a kind of looking at things, um, Basically, we want to see things as very complex. We cannot see it as a one-dimensional, uh, you know, system. Everything affects each other. And sometimes what we do can greatly affect others in big ways. Okay, so a simple, um, a simple provision of a rule can actually affect a lot of those people who are below us. So we need to be very sensitive. We need to understand how complex uh, systems and processes are and how can they have a great domino effect to the people that we manage. So that, that's just a, an overview of systems thinking. But later on, we'll be having a chance to discuss that. Although we need to consider that, that the complexity of the processes involved in planning are very deep and they are very deep rooted that's why we need to base our decisions on very very specific uh, data and information that we'll be gathering first and the mindset of continuous improvement is one of the guiding principles in fact it is the methodology that we use right so when you say methodology we follow the exact steps we do when you conduct continuous improvement process right so there are specific major steps like assess uh, plan and act so all these we'll discuss later on. All right, so another very important uh, guiding principle is the formulation and implementation of the SIP shall involve the active participation of all education stakeholders in the school and uh, the community. So as mentioned before, um, SIP is a very important feature in SBM that we need to really do. So as you can see here, when we formulate and implement the school improvement plan, we should have an active participation of all the education stakeholders in the school and uh, possible the people in the community, right? So we should involve them in the process of 
uh, improving our schools. Right. So this is the SIP process flow chart. We see that from January to March, as much as possible, the school head with the team will prepare the SIP development, uh, gather and organize necessary data, we form the SPT, uh, convene the SPT for orientation, vision sharing, and scheduling. Right. So after that one, all after doing all the preparatory activities, uh, we we try to identify the PIAs or the priority improvement areas. We try to present school data, identify identify and review uh, all these priority improvement areas, and we also try to analyze the priority improvement areas by setting general objectives and organizing the project team. Right. So after this, we try to uh, listen to the voice of the learners and other stakeholders, and then we analyze the school processes in order for us to identify uh, the storm clouds. So these storm clouds will be our basis or area of focus. Uh, once we identify this area of focus, we do the root cause of an analysis to identify what is the really the reason behind uh, the the problems in the processes that we're doing, and then we try to present this root cause to the SPT. Right. In the second week of May, we submit the following, the copy of the SIP, copy of the AIP year one and the previous uh, cycle. Then we also submit the AIP year two and year three with project monitoring forms of the previous implementation. So we'll also try to do the uh, review of general objectives and targets, write the SIP and prepare the AIP. And then we, the project team where it's going to formulate solutions, develop project design. So this is actually a cyclical process. If you try to look at it, um, it is a continuous process of assessing, planning, and then acting. So basically, that's why it's called continuous improvement because the cycle doesn't stop uh, unless you find the best solutions. No? So as you can see here, the project team tests the solutions. If it works, uh, then we try to roll out the, the solutions. If it doesn't, you test solutions again, continue doing it, and try to uh, you know continue doing uh, what you can do to improve your systems and processes. It's like a cycle that we need to do in order for us to continuously improve what we, whatever we are doing. Okay, so the three-year period that follows the assess, plan, and act phases. So as you can see here, uh, these are the main dimensions of the SIP. As we all know, this is a continuous improvement methodology that we're looking at here. Uh, we try to assess whatever we have um, based on data, based on research. We try to find out what is really the problem. And out from that, we try to plan. And then we try to uh, create specific plan. And then we act based on uh, the plan that we have. Right. So after doing the acting phase we now assess reassess ourselves in order to uh, check if we are doing things right uh, as you can see within the within the assess plan and act phases there are smaller circles there of progress check okay so this represents what we call continuous improvement because um, if even if it's a big cycle for the three uh, years that we'll be doing um, it's very important that within it, we also take into consideration if we are improving. So this is a continuous process of really assessing yourself and then planning again and then acting based on the feedback that you receive. Okay, So this is one of the major misconceptions in the field that the SAP is just a mere uh, output that we need to submit to the division office. Uh, it is something that we actually submit but at the end of the day we want our systems and processes to improve so that is the reason behind it right so emphasize the process of learning and continuous improvement that is the reason behind why we continuously want to assess ourselves uh, perfection is not the target the target is continuous improvement that, that is a statement by jose rivera um, last 2015 right so we have what you call preparatory activities in order for you to really perform all of this you need to perform what we call the preparatory activity. So what do we do? We gather data and organize the necessary data. You can put them into graphs, tables, etc. Or the SPT to analyze later on. After that, you form the SPT and you convene them for the orientation, vision sharing, and scheduling of um, your your planning. So when, when you gather them together, please... Um, uh, this these are the roles, no? the objectives that we need to 
to do to gather information on the situation of children and learners in terms of their access to quality basic education and the situation of the school in terms of governance so to begin the sip process by mobilizing the school community team or the spt so what do you do here uh, you gather and organize necessary data form the spt convene the spt for all right so we're going to focus now to gather and organize the necessary data so what do we do we try to group the data that will come in similar sources we orient your team on what data should be gathered you check the ebis other forms and documents whatever data you have maximize school community-based meetings to get primary and secondary data you can ask questions though so, um primary data you gather on your uh, on your own and then data you get from somewhere that's what you call secondary data you can also ask experts gather specific data that can come only from them uh, ensure accuracy make sure that uh, as the as the wise adage says garbage in garbage out right consolidate and organize the scdt right so gather and organize necessary data like you can have for governance you can have the school profile data for access how many dropouts do you have uh, attendance and retention among schools and quality remember that it is under this three thrust that you should do your improvement under governance access and then quality All right so an a is to help the school head team to organize data uh, it is a container of all your existing data. However, schools can gather and organize data on their own way. Remember that whatever you have in Annex 1A is just a, a template uh, that can help you organize it. But you can always uh, gather data on your own based on the three thrusts that we have discussed. Okay, so we have here the child mapping tool. Uh, you can also use you can also use the child friendly school survey because we want our schools to be child friendly, right? So you also check the child protection policy checklist and then you can also have the student-led school watching and hazard mapping because we also prioritize the safety of our learners, right? So you can have this one, gather organized necessary data. These are the outputs that you may have. School community data template, the school mapping tool, the school report card. Uh, as mentioned, this should be something. These are preparatory activities that you need to gather ahead before doing the SPT. So... Um, you know, doing the planning. So make sure that you gather this ahead of time. Right, so let's go now to 1.2. So form the SPT. So these are the representatives. School head as team leader, student representative, as much a teacher representative, parent representative. You have a barangay or LG representative, the member of BDRRMC, uh, the member of the school child protection group. Please note that at least one of your members should be a member of the school governing Council. So that is uh, the composition of the SPT. The school head may add more members to its SPT. Remember that. So you can also add um, non-government organization representatives, alim or lama, indigenous people representatives, Arabic language and um, values education teachers, school alumni representatives from the communities adjacent to one where your school is located. Okay. So considerations in choosing the SPT. So gender balance, IP and Muslim representation in case where the teacher representative is also the school head, such as in small schools, additional seat may be given to parent representatives. So list of members for the SPT with the representations, right? So let's go now to 1.3. So convene the SPT for orientation, vision sharing, and scheduling. So this time you're going to... Uh, Put them together in one place and then be creative. Think of reflective activities that will engage your SPT. Do not make it very boring. Make it engaging for them, right? So make sure that there is clearly stated objective or purpose of the meeting, expectation of what the outcomes and assigned deliverables will be. Ask someone to document the meeting, recap the discussion, and state any decisions. Guide a group to discuss what the next steps are. When a member needs to be absent from a meeting, he may send a substitute who can speak for him or her. So, this is the first step, um, orientation of the SIP process. You talk about the mandate of DepEd and the SIP, but not too long, uh, just enough for them to really understand what is our mission. You can also talk about the government, uh, Governance of Basic Education Act, a 915, SIP key features and principles, SIP development, implementation cycle, and phases. Right, so just make sure that you make it um, really in terms of um, time and co time. Uh, you make it worthwhile for our participants. Okay, so not 
too long, not too boring. Make it creative for them to be really engaged. So roles and responsibilities. Discuss and agree on the roles and responsibilities of the SPT chair and members. As a member to facilitate, give everyone a chance to share their ideas. Facilitator will synthesize and let the SPT comment and approve what has been discussed. Right, so vision sharing, there's only one vision, mission, and core values. It's important to internalize this one VM. Okay, so you can have this schedule here uh, for your SPT. Okay, phase two here. Show them that this is uh, our timeline. Right, so what are your outputs after doing this? You have a documentation of vision sharing list of SPT roles and responsibilities and SPT timeline. Right, so that ends our first part. These are the preparatory activities for the school improvement plan. Um, you su subscribe for more learnings. We will be uploading um, the, the video for the part two is seen here uh, below. And you can also check the channel to gain access to part two. Part two will talk about the access, uh, the assess process, okay, which is the first step in doing your school improvement plan. Thank you.